Hello, somebody that's praying. I'm somebody that's praying too every day. Um, this is Sunday morning. Already prayed for the Sunday services and all the churches in New Mexico, especially Church on the Move. And so praying for everybody, praying that we have great services across our state, that God just continues to pour out His Spirit on people all over the state of New Mexico. Listen, we're standing here in Farmington. We've made it this far, just have a few more days left. But I wanted to show you the San Juan River. It's one of our bigger rivers. And so Chris is going to give you a good shot of that right now so beautiful it's flowing so big it's just so good to see water because in the southern part of the state all the creeks the gila river look like they're they're drying up i mean they're just so low um and so and some of them just have no water in them at all the gila was the only one that had any kind of decent water and it's not even it's a trickle compared to what it's been in the past. And so, anyway, it was great to see water up north. They've had a record snowfall in the Rockies. And I just want to talk about the San Juan River for just a little bit. It's, 300, it's about 355 miles long, and it actually originates from the Colorado Rockies and uh, some of our snow, too, but mostly from the San Juan Mountains in Colorado. That snow melt flows south into New Mexico and feeds the San Juan River. It's got a bunch of tributaries. The Animus is not too far from here. It's huge and overflowing its banks, too, and feeding the San Juan River. And the San Juan River actually runs two power plants in, in New Mexico, the Navajo and the Farmington Dams. It, it produces quite a bit of electricity. You can see why. It's flowing so big and it's so full it's almost over over the banks and so it's really cool and it ends it goes all the way through new mexico northern new mexico and it ends in lake powell uh, at the, it goes into the Navajo Reservoir, but it continues to go on from there after it produces electricity and ends in Lake Powell, Utah, in Utah. And so that's where it finally dumps its water. Uh, it's just crazy how, how cool, uh, how God made all this to flow in function. In the, when, when things are running properly, there's just a, there's a flow. There's a flow in that. And I want to talk to you about Romans 8.32, where, where God is talking about in Romans how much he loves us. And he says in Romans 8.32, if I would give you my son, if I would give you my son. It's like God's trying to convince us that he loves us. All throughout the scripture, the Holy Spirit's trying to inspire us, encourage us, that, man, I love you. I love you. In Ephesians, he says, I love you with a surpassing love. And in Romans, he says, nothing can separate you from my love. And he says in 832, the rest of that verse is, if I give you my son, would I not give you all things? He's just constantly trying to remind us that he's good. It's amazing how easy it is to forget that. You know, we go through stuff, we go through trials and tests, and we go through difficulties and tough times. And, and you know, our, our minds and our flesh and this world tries to tell us, man, God's not good. God's not good, but he is good. He is good, and he's constantly trying to communicate that to us. So I want to communicate that to you this morning. God is good. If he would give up his only begotten son, if God would come in the flesh, in the form of Jesus Christ our Lord, and die for us, give his life, his whole life, tor be tortured, experience pain that he never experienced. You know, Jesus never even stubbed his toe, never even hit his thumb with a hammer when he was a carpenter. He never experienced any pain until he experienced it with the whip and the punching, the beatings he took, the crown of thorns, the nails through his hands. Yet he was willing to do that for our sins to save us. If he's willing to do that, then how can we not believe that he's good, that he's willing to get us through trials, get us through the tests, teach us to endure, give us strength, teach us to trust him. And so, listen, we're believing God for miracles. I'm believing God for miracles. That what looks impossible to man is possible with God. It is impossible for men, but it's not impossible for God. It is possible with Him. And so let's build our faith in Him. Let's trust Him that if He would do that for us, if He would give us an abundance of water here and bless us and, and encourage us and, man, and, and just pour out his, his, his blessings upon our land here, why wouldn't He pour out His blessings upon our lives? Trust Him, trust Him, trust Him. Have faith in His goodness.
He said he'll take us from glory to glory. His glory is his goodness and mercy. He's going to take us from goodness and mercy to goodness and mercy to goodness and mercy. So let's go to the next level today and trust God, believe God, that he can and will perform miracles for us. Listen, I love you. Have a great Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. I'll see you next Saturday. It's coming up, just about finished. I'll see you next Saturday at the Veterans Dinner and at the, the big fireworks display that's taking place at Cielo that we're putting on as a church just to bless people. We're going to give people a chance to receive Jesus over the over the radio. It's going to be so much fun, and we're going to believe for, for thousands of people to pray and actually be born again. And so anyway, we love you. God bless you. Have an awesome, awesome Sunday.